Hyun John, I'm pleased to welcome you here on behalf of Basel Composition Competition. You are from South Korea. Having studied music theory in your native country, you continued studying in international schools as the Universität der Künste in Berlin or the famous Juilliard School in New York. With musical roots in European classical music, multicultural experiences are fused into your compositions and your work cannot be defined by one particular style. You often get inspiration from various sources such as art, nature and also religion. Your new piece Proscuneo will be premiered tonight by the Kammer Orchester Basel directed by Frank Olu. What does the title Proscuneo mean? Proscuneo is an old Greek word, the definition of which is to kiss the hand of a superior in homage and respect. The word appears about 54 times in the New Testament, mostly being used uh, with a meaning I worship. The fact that the word is in the form of first person singular may indicate that this piece uh, is my direct uh, faith confession in God of Trinity. In your description of the work, you talk about your fascination of religious themes and state that Proscuneo is, most, is your most intimate work ever. Why? Um, mostly in two senses. Firstly, although many of my works find their original inspiration from the Bible, Proscuneo is my first instrumental piece which directly expresses my thanks and praises to God in whom I believe. And secondly, um, as I was composing this piece, I tried not to use the sounds and colors, which in my view, don't suit my own personality. No, as a composer, it is my biggest concern to find my own voice. And writing this piece was an attempt to answer these basic questions as follows. Who am I as a composer? And in what sense is my music different from the others? How did you translate this intimacy musically for a large string orchestra then? Uh, for me, uh, the choice of instrumentation does not necessarily affect on how, I, how much close I feel towards my music. Rather, it was uh, the process of working itself which gave me a strong feeling of connection with my music. Um, I composed this piece note by note uh, with a pencil and an eraser. And whenever I got stuck, I laid my hand on the score and asked God for his help. Uh, but if you still ask me, uh, you will listen to the players sing along uh, the segments of the chant melodies at the end of my piece. And that may explain how much I want to be singing along with the other instruments in this music. You now talked about it. You have been fascinated by a live worship recording featuring the voices of thousands of people praying together. Is the connection between music and words musicalized? Uh, yes. Um, in that recording, you can hear the voices are in their own tone and speed, yet they are in perfect order, conveying a sense of unity and a harmonization with music. In my music, uh, you can hear the constant use of uh, chant-like melodies, and uh, they are clearly recognizable, but I use them in the way that they can blend well together with the other surrounding musical elements, such as uh, open fifths and harmonic sounds of the strings and successive minor thirds in fast and shimmering movements. As a result, uh, they are separable 
but inseparable at the same time, as the music and prayer in that recording make one very powerful way of worship together. So the piece stands for a revival of spirituality in music of our times. What can concert music contribute to that? Uh, you know, my ultimate goal as a composer has been to write a piece of work that satisfies both musicality and the spirituality uh, of a high quality. I'm still on my journey to accomplish this task, but at the moment I would be content if my music can make my potential audiences to think about uh, their relationship with God once again in their life. Thank you for the interview. Thank you.